Hi, I'm Dominic Percari. I wrote and directed Beyond the Lake, and this is The Breakdown. First up, Heist Games. My sophomore thesis project about two rival groups of thieves who happen to simultaneously rob the same bank. So this shot is cool because it's essentially exactly what you see. So this area here where they break through the wall is actually already in the basement of the bank. And then for the breakthrough shot itself, I chose another more decrepit section of the bank basement and just built a little cinder block wall four feet away from the actual wall. I just spent a day driving around soliciting cinder blocks from my rural friends and extended family. I then threw this up in the basement of the bank. Now, because I knew the structural integrity of this wall and we only had one take to get it right, it's actually my hands that are swinging the hammer right here. I've got some gloves on to hide my darker complexion. And then Zach switches into frame with the hammer. Screw it. We gotta go. All the dressing you see in this bank was not there. This was a, a bank in Bridgeville, my hometown, that had been closed down. It had been for a while, so it was just kind of storing all the owner's junk. So not only did I clear it all out for them so that I could film there, but I also had to dress it myself. So uh, these right here, curtains from my parents' dining room. You can see a little terrible towel on the wall. We have the Les Miserables shadow box, as I said before. We got the poster of the Steelers MVPs. We got the Rules of Fight Club poster there from my room as well. So basically I took everything from my house and put it into this bank and at the time so I was living at home alone at this point and so when they finally came back I got a call from my parents like Dom are you okay? I said yeah what, what's wrong and they said um don't panic uh, I think we've been robbed and I looked around at all the stuff and I was like I think I know who did that. Any parents of filmmakers you know. So another aspect of Point Park films is that you're not allowed to show or have weapons in your films. If you want to have things with guns or knives, you have to imply them in a way so that there is no actual weapons on set, no prop weapons on set. I actually got docked a letter grade because Debbie's character uses the bag as a weapon. So to imply the fact that he has a gun, we're shown you know, the shoulder holster and a flash kind of comes through his jackets, how he do that. So that he had like something to put weight there. There was like a tiny gun made of Lincoln Logs that I had made there. Uh, so that's what's actually in his uh, holster. That's a real marble floor. And obviously we were not gonna have John, John, Johnny. We're not gonna have him actually throw him onto the marble floor. So there's actually, uh, sequence of pads actually underneath Johnny that we cover with a green cloth. And then we got a clean plate, which is this shot, except with nothing else there. We move these two into position, we remove the mat into position, and then we key out the mat, replace it with the floor, and it looks like there's nothing behind him, especially when it's moving fast. That's how we did that without killing our actor. It's so much easier to do fights when you have people, not just that know how to fight, but know how to be physical. Johnny wrestled for a while, and John as a judo black belt. As those are two grappling sports, both guys knew how to be physical. So if I had advice for young filmmakers that want to do fight scenes, if you had to stack up a beginner stunt guy versus a beginner wrestler, I would choose the wrestler nine times out of 10, because again, he knows how to be physical, and that's really what sells a fight. It's not necessarily the choreography, it's the physicality. So this shot was kind of a key insert that we didn't get on set. So this is actually my hands 
and I'm just shooting this in the living room of my house. And then I rotoscoped, which is the process of just kind of manually cutting out the edges of the frame, rotoscoped that, and then I took that same clean plate and put it then down on the floor, which if you look closely, the tiles are a little bit small. The important part was that we <laughs> imply that he is holding this gun, which he's not holding a gun, he's holding a tiny gun made of Lincoln logs that I had made there, wrapped in a jacket, because we can't show guns. Oh, if you look closely here, you can see that this is me. We have a safety coordinator at Point Park, and it's Terry Shirk. I've taken years off that man's life with all the films I made there. Every stunt we wanted to do, we had to run by him. So for this, I had to say, hey, all right, uh, I'm gonna be the guy, I'm gonna be the stunt double. I'm gonna have like a big karate pad on my back. This is one of two times I basically put on Johnny's outfit, I put on Johnny's shoes, and then I had John throw me in. When I'm moving, you can't really see that it is me, in fact, in that spot. <laughs> So a lot of cool stuff went into this shot. First of all is, again, this is me stunt doubling Johnny. Uh, so I was planning on just taking Johnny's face and trying to digitally impose it onto my face. If you watch my face, there's a moment where you can see that the face tracking like cuts out. You can see that I'm wearing like Everlast boxing headgear. And then you can just see Johnny's head generally going like and being all like weird and spasticky. That's why I do this as fast as possible because I knew that I needed to cover up. Now this table, if you look closely here, there's a couple lines on the bottom of this table. And I actually took a circular saw put it just below the width of the table, and then I pre-scored the wood so that it would break easier. This Keurig, it broke like, you know, years before I made this, but I put it in my closet for like five years, knowing someday I'm gonna make a movie where I need to be able to trash a coffee maker, and that is that coffee maker. So if you look uh, here, you can see a little bit of purple at this bank, there just so happened to be a bunch of spare, like two by two tiles of carpet lying around, the same carpet that was there. So I had Christina, one of our production assistants, make uh, essentially a large mat out of that. And you can see the uh, junction points of that if you look closely here. We then put that carpet mat over the pad, laid it on the floor where I was gonna land. And then in post-production, I kind of digitally blurred the edges and cloned them so that there was a softer transition at the main focus areas. Obviously, I couldn't do that everywhere because there was not enough material to work with. Essentially take a piece like this and you then just copy it and transfer it over to here. So after we put the carpet down, we very gently put this table on. We dressed it with all the stuff, you know, the, the sugar, the coffee stirs and et cetera. <laughs> oh yes, you can, uh, right here uh, is a pair of feet. We had the camera like latched onto this big like 12 foot pole. And then we had a production assistant stand on each of the window ledges and they just held the pole and held the camera. John and I we practiced the throw a bunch of times and it was just time to go. So, all right, we're gonna do this. Ready? In three, two, one. And then it's just like, all right, well, this is it. Three, two, five. Let's do this. We're gonna do it, okay? Three, two, one, action. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I didn't even look, but that looks so cool. Good son! <laughs> it's really an advantage when you don't have time to be scared. Yeah. It really helps. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> And a year later when we made the magic words, I made that same noise. I remember LK was like, that's the same sound that Dominic made when we threw him through a table. But we'll get to that later. So the way we did this is that this is obviously not a real leg. I took a pool noodle, some PVC pipe, and a lot of medical gauze, and I just made a fake leg, give John a spare pair of pants, cut a hole in like the left buttock of the pant, and then he stuck his actual leg through that hole, and then we fed the fake leg through the actual pant leg. We filmed a lot with Johnny, like kind of struggling, 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 cut, swapped out, put the fake leg in, and then he started to struggle, struggle, then yeah, he just pulled straight down through this thing. This move is a reference to an Undisputed 2 when Michael Jai White breaks Scott Atkins' leg super viciously. The images associated with this were something special. I'll show them to you here and you can decide for yourself if you want to laugh or not.
What if we did it? Also, uh, this was the first time I ever met John, and we've worked happily together ever since. He's great. Now you might notice a different feel to the shots outside the bank versus inside. Everything outside is shot on a anamorphic lens setup that I made with a 1980s projector lens. They're not the cleanest shots, but I just loved that look so much. Even then, I knew I had to get it in there. You really think he's smarter than me? I believe I had just watched The Usual Suspects for the first time when I was writing this, and you can definitely see the influence of that here. Oh, he is. 